Birchut, Moray, Verabotay, with the permission of Hashem, I would like to wish you a good week. This week, it's uh, the parasha of Tetzave. As you know, the, this beautiful parasha, it talks about the close that uh, the Kohen used to wear. This parasha talk about the, the menorah that you have to, that uh, you have to light. And then the next parasha of next week is the parasha Kitisa, unfortunately. And that parasha, it's talked about that the Jews, they made the Egel, they made Arabod Azara. They built a, a cup and uh, they said, you are the God. They built something, an animal. They were there, some witchcraft that they convert themselves, they were Egyptian, and when they saw all the miracles, so they come, they convert themselves to the Judaism. But still, they used to believe that it's impossible to pray direct to Hashem. You, have, you need to, to pray to Hashem with an intermediary. You know, it must be somebody between you and God. It's like a, no one can reach the king. So there is always somebody who can, uh, a secretary, it's like uh, unfortunately, God forbid. It's like uh, people to reach me, it's impossible to reach me because they think it's impossible to reach me. So always they call, uh, you know, the secretary or they call somebody, but I, I, I'm happy. Anyone want to call me can call me. They know the, a lot of people, they are, they are afraid, they are ashamed or they, are, uh, they feel uh, they are not, uh, uh, they, are not uh, they don't deserve to talk to me direct or call me direct. Of course, uh, I don't care. I mean, uh, I'm here for everybody. I'm not uh, like Hashem. L'Avdil, Hashem is for everybody. Hashem, He said, Velo ta'asu Elohim achem al palay. Hashem, He does what? that there is an intermediate between us and him. I should be said, no, you want to pray to me? You pray to me direct. It's, it's not, you don't need to pray to me uh, with, uh, through somebody, direct. So at the time, the, 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 the Egyptian, they, they thought, uh, okay, maybe, uh, okay, once Hashem appeared to us when he gave the Torah to the Jews, but after, it's not every time that we have to be direct, uh, a, contact, a direct contact with him. No, we need uh, something in between. And that was the sin that they did the Jews. That the parasha kitisa. My friend, the question is, how is, how, is it, how is it possible that that thing happened? I mean, they know that Hashem said that I don't want in between somebody, something between you and me. You know, Moshe Rabbeinu, Alav Shalom, he was the, the prophet, he was the rabbi. He was the one that he gave us the word from Hashem, he teach us Torah from Hashem, and then, but Moshe Rabbeinu, Alav Shalom, before he went to the Shamaim, to the sky, to bring the Torah from there, he warned them, he said, look, I'm going for 40 days, and after 40 days, I will come. In the meantime, you have, if you need uh, to know something, there is Aaron, there is who, there is uh, some rabbis that he selected for them. You have a problem. Hey, I mean, he warned them. I mean, you have a problem, you go to see them. And, and, but 
to do what they did. It's impossible. How would they did that? How did they did that? I mean, how it's possible that they heard the voice of Hashem who told them, I don't want that, I want you to save me direct. I don't want that there be something in between. And they did the contrary. They, they, they created uh, Egel, they created, uh, you know, uh, uh, Abu Dazar, uh, idolatry, with, which, uh, witchcraft that she was talking, she was dancing, she was eating. I mean, and they said, ah, this is your God. I mean, they created something to be in the between them and Hashem. How, 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 how they did that? It's, it's, impos it's impossible. I mean, they know that Moshe Rabbeinu, he warned them that you should, should not do it. And they did it. How is it possible? How is it possible to, 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 go, to, to reach that level that you cannot have a direct contact with Hashem? You need, uh, you know, something in between. You and Hashem, it's like you want to pray, you want to do something, you ask the intermediary to bring this to Hashem. No, Hashem said no. This is idolatry. Hashem, he said no, I don't want this. Baruch Hashem, today, thanks God, Baruch Hashem, we go to the synagogue, we pray thank to Hashem. Even uh, to pray in front of a picture of a rabbi, you are not allowed. Because it's like Abu Zarah, it's like idolatry. You have to, even to pray in front of a mirror, you are not allowed. Because the mirror you see yourself. It's like you bend to yourself, it's no good. Even to kiss a child in, this, in the synagogue, you're not allowed. Because in the synagogue, you can only kiss the Torah, pray to Hashem, that's it. You cannot give your love to somebody, even your son. This, uh, the, the synagogue, you have to love your, uh, your love only to Hashem. So how do these people, they, they did what they did? The Arab of the, uh, those Egyptians that they convert themselves to the Judaism, they did such a big sin to do Abu Dazara and they push the Jews to, to do the same like them. How? 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 And there must be a reason. What was the reason? We want them that you cannot do that. My friend, I would like to tell you this. After that the Jews received the Torah, there is some parashiot that talk about, like there is a parasha, talk about the Avadim. Avadim is the, 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 the esclave. It's like a servant. Before it was a business to buy people, selling people, and they become slaves. And the, the Torah said, at that time there was a big business of slaves. Today, thanks God, there is no slave today. Even in America, there the, the, was a big war in America a few, few hundred years ago to stop the business of the slaves. And all over the world today, it's uh, forbidden to sell, to sell slaves, especially uh, a slave who, a man who to sell himself. Today it's forbidden. Each, each, each person is a man. It's, uh, he has his own right to be a slave. It's something terrible. So th there is a parasha of slaves that if you buy a slave, so you cannot keep it more than six years. After six years, you have to give him his freedom. Now, what about if this man, he decided that he want to remain a slave. He don't want his freedom. He want to, he want to, to remain to be a slave with his family. So what can we do? What can you do? So there is a, the Torah said, that if a man, he wants to remain being slave, and he don't want his freedom, okay, he can, but there is a condition. His boss, his uh, boss, he will take him to the door, and he will take his ear 
and he will uh, put a hole in his ear uh, near the, the mezuzah, near the door, he will put a hole there and then he will, uh, then he become his slave uh, forever. So now the rabbis and the Gemara ask a question. Why this kind of ceremony, if a slave, that, you know, the slave, he stole money from somebody and he did not have, he did not have money to pay what he stole. So the bidding, they, they can sell him to, to be a slave, to pay back what is, what is, what is still. Okay, that is the, the law of, the, of a slave. Now, if the slave, he don't want to leave his uh, boss after six years, so we do to him what I told you before, a special ceremony that his boss, he take him to the, the door, near the mezuzah, and he, put a, and he put his ear at the door, and then he put there a hole in his ear. So the Gemara said, why this uh, kind of ceremony? Why? And the, and the Gemara answered something nice. He said, because a man that he heard, don't steal, and this man is stole, not only he stole, but now that he has a chance to be free after six years, and he wants to remain a slave, so we have to do to him this kind of, uh, of punishment in his ear. Those ear that they heard in the Har Sinai, those ear here that they heard, I am Hashem who will give you the liberation from Egypt. I am Hashem who will give you the freedom from Egypt. And uh, you are now not anymore slave of Egypt, now you are my slaves. Those ears that they heard this, and now he has a chance to live, have his freedom, and he wants to remain to be a slave. So this is his punishment. My friend, this is the parasha of Mishpatim, the parasha of slave. Now, I want to explain, it, to explain you a few things. First, why if you buy a slave, you have to keep him by you six years. And after six years, you have to give him freedom. Why? So there is a big rabbi, Rabbi Haim Shlomovich, is a big, big rabbi. He was a big tzaddik. He said, when the Jews left Egypt, there were slaves there. Then now, Baruch Hashem, they receive their freedom. And uh, still, they have a memory how much the Egyptians, they, they, they hurt them, they killed them, they didn't give them freedom. Day and night, they were really slaves. So now, still, even now that they are free, but still the memories, those memories, that's what they been through in Egypt. They can never forget it. So Hashem said, please, Jews, don't forget. You remember how much you suffered being a slave. So now if you buy a slave, so take care of him. Take care of him. Now take care of him. Don't, don't work with him. Don't give him hard work. Don't kill him. Remember how much you, you suffered in Egypt. So don't make him suffer too much, please. And Abraham Shlomovich, he gave a beautiful, uh, he gave a beautiful uh, uh, story. Uh, a beautiful uh, story. He said it was, uh, I, I think it's a real story. It happened with Napoleon. It happened that one day Napoleon, uh, when he was fighting the Russian, and then, uh, it was a hard fight, a hard war. So Napoleon himself, he wanted to go and to see what's... Uh, he went as a spy to see what's going on. 
He was a spy. He went because he, he didn't trust uh, uh, some of his own people that he sent to spy. They didn't give him uh, much information. So he went. He, he put new clothes, you know, and he changed his face and he went. And he saw that there were two uh, Russian. They were looking at him and they were following him. So Napoleon he thought maybe uh, maybe they recognize me. So what he did, he ran away, and he saw a house, uh, a Jew that uh, he sell uh, repair shoes. Napoleon thought maybe this Jew he will be uh, he, he will not uh, he, he will not uh, uh, reveal you know that he is Napoleon to the Russian. So he went there. So the Jew said, yes, sir. He said, please, this is not the time that I will talk to you. Help me save my life. I am Napoleon. So the Jew said, yes, if you are Napoleon, I am too Napoleon. He said, please, this is not the time to joke. Hide me. See, if they catch me, they kill me. Please, hide me. So he said, well, I don't know where to hide you. The only way I have here is uh, I, this is a, a mountain of shoes, old shoes, very smelly. Hide yourself there, and I will put other shoes on you. Okay, please do it, but don't tell, don't tell I am here. Okay, okay, get yeah, go. Well, now, Mr. Majesty Napoleon, you know, I know you, you like uh, deodorant, I know you like a uh, good smell, you know, Good, uh, good perfume there. Uh, it's a, a Russian perfume. Please, uh, it's a uh, shoes. Okay, please hide me. So he put all the shoes on him, and the Russian knocking at the door. They went in. He said, "Have you seen somebody here? It's a very dangerous man. We think it's Napoleon himself. No, Napoleon will come to me." To my uh, shop? No, no. So they started to look and they started to push the shoes. And they talked with the, you know, they, they went on top of the shoes and they started to get some shoes. Well, they went out, they said, oh. Okay, thank you. And they went. A few hours later, the Jew, Moishe, said to Napoleon, Are you still there? Are you still under the shoes? Did you, maybe you die with the smell of the shoes. So he saw the shoes moving, and Napoleon came out, and he told him, thank you, you saved my life, I, I pay you. Thank you, I pay you. I will not forget you. So, a few days later, Moshe the Jew, he gave him some Jewish clothes, and he gave him some sandwich, and he told him, Bye-bye. Good luck. And Napoleon told him, hey, he's marrying. I give it to you. When the war is over, come to France. I pay you. you will not, I will not forget you. A few years later, the war was finished. And Moshe, he said to his wife, what do you think if we go to Paris, we go to visit Napoleon? His wife, she told him, are you sure that man was Napoleon? Yes, according to the pictures that I saw in the newspapers. Really, it's Napoleon, and I have his ring. Maybe this is the time to, to go to visit him, you know. So she said, okay, but it's very far away. Okay, so we will sell what we have here with the money that we get, we go. I think there he will give us uh, something. So that's what, that's what he did. They arrived to Paris. They went to the Chateau de Versailles and uh, they arrived there and there was guards. They said, well, they started to talk Russian. Nobody understand it, but he showed the, the ring of Napoleon. So the people, they were afraid. Napoleon, what's this? So they, they, they called somebody who speaks Russian. So he came and said, this, what's this? Who give you this? Because they know it was a war in Russia. So I said, it's Napoleon give me this ring. 
La Pena will give you this ring? Yes. He expects me. I saved his life. Are you crazy? You talk like that about Napoleon? Look, I'm here with my wife. He invited, he invited us here to come after the war. So I'm sure he will recognize us. We have his ring. Okay? Come. They took him to the palace. Napoleon was having his, uh, with his uh, guest. He went to Napoleon, they told him there is Jews. Don't forget that Napoleon, he made uh, in France, uh, he was the first king in France who, uh, who built up laws, Jewish laws. And he took some good Jewish laws and he put them in the French government. So, and he, and he was the first one to build synagogues in France. And he was the first one who, who gave the order that the rabbis, chief rabbi, ought, till now, they get paid by the French government. So, up to now, the French uh, chief rabbis, they get their wage from the French government. That was Napoleon who gave this, uh, this uh, law. So, they want to, to tell him the reason. They told him the whole story. And they showed him the ring. Napoleon made a big smile. He said, bring them in. In front of everybody, he said, Thus, this man, he saved my life. And he told him the story. So, Napoleon was so happy. He said, I know you have to eat uh, your kosher food, but don't worry. You can stay in my palace. I will bring some rabbi to take care of you. You know, and uh, everything was good. He was happy was having a good time. And Napoleon told him, look, if you want to stay here in France, I'll give you French citizenship. You want to go back to Russia, I will send guards with you, and I will buy you their house. You will have enough money for all your life. You don't need to be a, a, a working, to be a shoe, shoe ripper. So, Moishe said to Napoleon, the day that he was going to leave Paris, Majesty, can I ask you one question? He said, yes, of course. Can you tell me, what did you feel when you were under the shoes? And the Russian, they went on the shoes and they were looking for you. And you were under the shoes. What did you feel? And Napoleon, he got so angry. He started to scream to him. You dare talk to me like that? And he said, guards, hang him right away. You hang him now. Please, Majesty, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Majesty. I didn't mean to hurt you. Just, I wanted, it's a question that I had in my mind. And I thought to ask you, you will get the answer later. Now, get out from here. And his wife, she told Napoleon, what about me? What about you? You will always send you back to, to Russia, but you lost everything. Get out. But Napoleon, he said to his guard, when you put the string on his, uh, on his neck, wait till I come. Okay? They took him to the garden. Then all the soldiers were there. He was crying. And then there was a rabbi who came to say Shema Israel with him. They put the string on his neck. And then the guards, they started the ceremony, ta 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 ta, -ta before they hang him. And at the moment that the bureau, he said, one, two, three, after three, uh, they take the, the, they take the, the chair that where he was standing, then he would die. At that moment, Napoleon came and he told him, Moishe, what do you feel now? And Moishe told him, Majesty, why did that to me? Well, he said, you asked me, when I was under the shoes, what did I feel? How can I tell you what, what I feel that moment? I had 
to do to you the same what happened to me so you you feel what 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 what, uh, what, what I was feeling at the, at that moment that the Russian soldiers were on the shoes and I was under now we she understand I wanted just to give you a lesson and I'm sorry if I hurt you you said my life you just wanted to give you an answer but how can I give you the answer so Haim Shlomovich he said no one can know what it is being a slave no one can know how much it's terrible to be a slave only if you are a slave because the Jews were they were slaves and they know what it is a slave so I should be told them now that you know what it is a slave so be patient be miserable be nice to them if you buy a slave so don't uh, don't 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 be bad with them so this is the Torah the Torah is incredible the Torah it's uh, something that uh, that no one cannot understand the meaning of the Torah no no one can can understand no one so the Torah it's it's help us how to be a, a good person so help us how to be not only how to be a good person but how to be a good person to others as well my friend now you understand now you understand what it is the connection between being a slave to Hashem and being a slave to a man being a slave to Hashem it's a real freedom being a slave to a man it's terrible Hashem needs to give orders not be hard with them to the slaves my friend there is a question that uh, there is a question that everybody asks there is few parashiot the parasha of Matan Torah the parasha of Mishpatim the parasha and there is the parasha of Teruma how to build Hashem asked ask us to build a, a, a Mishkan you know, the house of Hashem, the temple and, uh, what is the connection of all this? my friend the connection, the connection of, of this is that Hashem he wants that a man to beat himself and to be a slave of Hashem he should build his house you know each, each person he is the house of Hashem I mean look as a Jew I eat kosher I respect Nida I, 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 I don't see what I should not see I pray I study Torah I do what Hashem wants from me I do a lot of sacrifice so, so it's like it's like a temple what do you do in the temple? in the temple when we had the Beit HaMikdash in Yerushalayim the Yerushalayim, the Beit HaMikdash we served Hashem there today there is no Beit HaMikdash so today the Beit HaMikdash is me each, 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 each Jew is a Beit HaMikdash so you have to be always holy always and the life is not easy it's hard to be to be a Jew so you have to work hard so you have to be the slave of Hashem if when you feel when you build yourself to be to be the slave of Hashem so automatically automatically you build yourself to be the house of Hashem you build yourself to be the house of, of, of Hashem and then there is the parish of Tetzave the parish of Tetzave is the light the parish of the menorah the parish of the clothes what is the parasha? The Torah talk about special clothes that we do to, to the Kohen. You should know that every one of us here is like a Kohen who serves Hashem. And we have to do, after 120 years, we will pass away. Only each mitzvah that we do, we build a, a nice clothes, a beautiful clothes. After 120 years, when we arrive to Hashem, we arrive to Hashem, 
with a clause that it was done with the mitzvot that we did. And what it is the menorah about? The menorah about the light. The light is the Torah. I mean, if you, during your life you were happy, the, your light was the Torah. It's not money, 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 ah, money, money. No, you like yourself the Torah. So you see, all those parashot have, have a meaning. Talk about receive the Torah. Talk about how to be a slave to Hashem. Talk about how much you have to be a good person to with yourself. And, with, and if you buy a slave, how much you have to be nice to him. Don't forget that you is where you've been a slave. So Hashem is not only nice, he, want, he doesn't want you only to be nice with yourself, with your family. Hashem wants you to be nice with others and with the slaves too. And then the Torah talk about once you feel that you are a slave, and you, so you will build yourself to be a house of Hashem that you do all kind of sacrifice because the slave always is willing to do sacrifice for his boss. So you, your boss is Hashem. So always doing sacrifice for Hashem. And then through Torah, Torah you will light yourself and then you will prepare a special clothes for after 120 years. This, this is the meaning of all those parashiyot. And now we come back. We come to Parashat Mishpatim, Parashat Kitisa. In Parashat Kitisa, the Torah talk about Mahasit Shekel, that once you build the Mishkan, you need the expensives. You have to, there is money to, to pay the sacrifice. You have to pay workers. So every Jew used to bring Mahasit Shekel, every Jew used to bring something to the Vita Mikdash. And this is, is for, it's expensive. So, Bidekabait, Bidekabait, that means, that means, you have to make sure, so, we just said now that the Mishkan, the, the man represents the Mishkan. That means that, every time we have to do a inventory about ourselves. Are we good? Are we not good? But we have to search about ourselves. Maybe we have to correct this. Maybe we have to correct that. This is better than buy it. And then, if you don't do all this, it's a problem. It's a big problem. If you don't do this, it's a big problem. So the Torah gave us some ideas how to build ourselves. The Torah gave us some ideas how to do an inventory on ourselves. The Torah teach us how to be close to Hashem, how to serve Hashem, how to make from our body to be a house of Hashem. You see, this is advices from the Mishkan, from all the, those parashiot, we learn how to act, how to behave. And if we don't have all those conditions, it's too bad. My friend, my friend, listen to this. Listen to this. It's something maybe you never heard in your life. Who started to do the who started to do the Abu Zara when Mushabi was in the Shamaim in the sky? The Arab Rabbi, those Egyptian, those Egyptian who convert themselves to the Judaism, those Egyptians that they were uh, the boss there. Now they're not in him, now they are, they are Jews that elect like everybody. When they saw that Mushabi didn't come down, so they decided to build Avodah uh, Zara, uh, idolatry, that, we, that this idolatry, will, she will be in between them and Hashem. So, we, at the beginning, we did ask a question. How, what happened exactly? Why? Those people, they become bad. What they become after all what they saw, miracles that they saw, because of all what they saw in Egypt, all those miracles that God did with the Jews, they decided to, to be to be Jew, to come with them. So 
what happened to them? Why did they, now they decided to do what they're not allowed to do? As we said, I don't want somebody between me and you, and they, they decided, why? My friend, the uh, answer is because they didn't feel slaves to Hashem. A man who doesn't feel that he is a servant of Hashem is a problem. Those people, they were Egyptian, they were boss. Their slaves were Jews. Now they are equal with the Jews. Now they are not anymore the boss of the Jews. Now they are uh, like everybody. They did not, you understand? They did not test what it is being a slave to be a slave of, of Hashem. My friend, you know, the Gemara said that Hashem, he said to Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe, don't accept those Egyptians to be Jew. And Moshe Rabbeinu said to Hashem, please Hashem, it's good that they will be Jew, because uh, they really, they, they realize that you are God. They would, he said, Hashem, he told Moshe, Moshe, it's a mistake, that what you're doing. So Hashem, Moshe Rabbeinu begged Hashem. So Hashem said, okay, take them, but you see, you will see that I was right. Unfortunately, Hashem always is right. Those Jews, those Egyptians that now they're Jews, it happened that they did something very, very bad. What they did? So they did something that they decided to come back what they were before. Because to be the slave of Hashem, only if really you know what it is big, that one day you're being slave, and now you know, ah, I was slave once. And now, I prefer to be the slave of Hashem. You understand? Only somebody who is slave, you will understand what it is a slave, to be a slave of Hashem. And because of this Egyptian, they never tasted what it is a slave. So, they never felt they were a slave of Hashem. And because they never felt that they were a slave of Hashem, so, when they saw that Moshe Rabbeinu is not here, so they decided, well, we want, we want to create some, somebody between us and, us and Hashem. Hashem, he doesn't like this. Because Hashem, he wants, Hashem, he said, as you know, a slave, always, he can go to see the king any time he wants to, to, to see him. Why? Because he's the servant. A servant, he can, a servant, he, he has the doors of the palace are open for, for him. Because he's the slave, he, he represents the, he is the servant of the king. Hashem, he wants us to be this, his servant and to feel that we are the servant of Hashem only because one day we were servants, we were slave of Pao. Now we know what it is being slave of Pao. Now that Hashem, he changed, he switched from being slave to, of Pao to be his slave, to be his servant. So we will appreciate Hashem. We appreciate ah, how much it's good to be the servant of Hashem instead of being the servant of Paro. This is, my friend, the learning, the teaching that we learn from all the parashiyot. In one, in one word, in one word, if you are the slave of the money, you cannot be the slave of Hashem. You cannot. If you think money, 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 you live only thinking money. It's impossible. Of course money is good. Of course. But don't be the slave of the money. People sometimes they don't eat, they don't sleep. Money, money, money. And they have enough to live a thousand years and they don't care. Money, only money. So you are the slave of the money. If you are the slave of the money, you can switch Hashem in a moment. God forbid. But if you cancel this, this quality of being slave of the money, by doing good things with the money, you enjoy yourself, of course, but do good things with it, and rest on Shabbat. Don't be the slave. It's like somebody said, told me, well, Rabbi, I don't understand you, Jew. On Shabbat, the best day of the week, you work. You don't work. I said, well, you don't understand. To understand, don't understand. But, Baruch Hashem, I feel good on Shabbat. He said, well, I don't understand. 
the best day that you can make money. So I said, I can make money after Shabbat. Yeah, but he said, after Shabbat, you make the double. I said, I make the double. What am I going to do with the double? Or just to put them in the bank, to, to invest them in houses? Would I take this with me after 120 years? No. Yeah, but you leave it to the children. My children, it's, there is enough for them. I should can give them. So, this is all about. I wish you well. God bless you. And uh, thank you.